chromosome, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 67. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Norman. Hello, Daniel. How are you? I've seen better days. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. It's nothing to be... Um, it's nothing really. <laughs> it's been a nothing day. It's been a nothing day. So, joining I've us... I've done nothing productive all day. <laughs> Not that really. Okay, fine. Yesterday, I got some trouble with... Downloading songs from iTunes and yeah, nobody wants to hear troubleshooting stories. It's boring. Of course not, especially with Apple products. Hey, 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 Apple products are not that bad. Not that bad, they're still bad, yeah, so continue. At least it's not an Xbox One. <laughs> yeah, that's agreed. <laughs> okay, and joining us today is Red Pear. Hello. Hey, Red, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. I heard that you're going to ShotCon. Hopefully, I can get there tomorrow. You are the envy of all of us here right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and our guest for this week is Chromosome, a pre-reader from EQD. Hi, I pre-read and write things sometimes, I guess. That's awesome. So how are you, Chromosome? I've seen better days. At least it's been a productive one, if not the uh, most content. Everyone's off to cons, so uh, a little lonely in the uh, Equestria Daily Skype chat. We get along. At least we have the ponies. Backstory here for whoever doesn't know, Chromosome is in Singapore right now. So, the reason why he's sad, he's not going to any cons right now. Well, for the record, if I can just clarify, I am moving back, and I would be moving back in time to go go to uh, BronyCon, but I decided not to go because I'd rather be with my family because I haven't been with them in a while, so... So you're a Singaporean? Pro- uh, no, I am originally French, and I've been living in the U.S. for, uh, I want to say, 13 years, and I moved here maybe two years ago. Oh, okay, I see. It's understandable. Well, family comes first, that's why I always say. And well, Absolutely. if you can't make it to BronyCon, you can always make it to Nightmare Night Dallas. That's in November. <laughs> oh, we'll see. If it's nearby and I'm not too bogged down with exams, then uh, we'll see what happens. Okie dokie dokie. I wish you the then. best of luck for that. Oh, well, I wish the best of luck for me too. <laughs> you need all the lucks. But anyway, before we start the show, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is... Who is your favorite character? Oh, geez. Um, like, are we talking overall? Because if we're talking overall... Like Dan used to say, we allow multiple choices. Yep. All right, multiple choices. Well, then, if you're giving me that opportunity, um, best main six pony is going to have to be Rick Barry. Best side character is going to have to be Sweetie Belle. And I like where this pony, is going. Background pony, without the slightest moment of doubt, is Rose Luck. Rose Luck? Oh, my. Love for color scheme. I can't get over it. You're the first person on this show who's ever answered a question like that after me. <laughs> I gave an answer just like that. That is perfect. That's the way any any wise man should structure his response. Yes, sir. True, 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 true. So, why rarity? Well, for a long time it was Fluttershy, ever since uh, season two, which was, you know, the golden days for her. <laughs> Uh, after season three kind of messed her up and I felt she went kind of backtracking in terms of character, I uh, went with Rarity because she was always my number two. And now she's just so much fun. What can you say? Have you read the micro series, the Rarity issue? I've been hearing a lot about it. I haven't got the time to take a look at it, though. I oh. might have to do that eventually. Okay, here's the deal. I'm guessing everybody here knows Chef Sandy from Bronyville, and everybody knows his favorite pony is Rainbow Dash. After the, the micro-series came out, his favorite pony now is Rarity. Wise man. I know people who hate Rarity with a passion. Rarity's my, in my top three, I have to say. And that micro-series, if I'm not careful, might bump my favorite pony down. That's quite alright, because I'm actually one of those people who despises Rainbow Dash with a passion. But <laughs> I'll get into that. Because uh. I get enough hate mail as it is. <laughs> yeah, I get the same for Luna. Oh, Luna. Uh, Anyways. <laughs> so, what about Sweetie Belle? Uh, Sweetie Belle, she's just adorable. What, I mean, do I really have to answer that? She's adorable. True, Sweetie I Belle. I do love the Sweetie Bells. She squeaks very cute. This, yeah, Squeaky Belle is the best thing ever. So does Sweetie Bot. <laughs> I'm a little iffy on the Sweetie Bot. You know, I'd rather have something I can cuddle. <laughs> true, true, <laughs> true, true. So, now, Roast Luck. Roast Luck, that's a rare pony. Like... I rarely hear people talk about Rose Luck that much. Well, 
for one, that's because a lot of people are wrong. But at first, I was, I was, you know, kind of the, you know, stereotypical deal, just you know, a vinyl fan because there was really nothing else. But then I think it was one of the pre-readers who also had a thing for Rose Lud kept posting her, and I was just, it kind of hit me how much I loved her color scheme, you know. Because the background pony doesn't really have personality aside from the ones you give to them, and I don't really yep. care about the personality. I just got hooked on the way she looked and, you know, just the way the colors went together, and I thought, she's so pretty, and it just kind of stuck since then. So, yeah, mm-hmm. Rose Lud is the best background pony. And I feel the same about Blossom Force. Have you read any fanfics about Rosluck? Not that I can think of that are particularly stuck out. I've read a few terrible ones. When they do see a Rosluck fic in the uh, in the big box, I jump on it. Yeah, I think I maybe only read one or two, and both of them weren't all that great. So I'm still looking. Okay, okay. If I find any, I'll link it your way. So, what's your favorite episode? Uh, despite Rarity still being my favorite character, I'm just gonna have to say flat out it was Hurricane Fluttershy. Oh, that was. Wow, that, that was just such a good episode. And even though Fluttershy isn't my favorite character now, she's down in the solid number two, though. Um, back then, that was just the best thing ever. And to me, it still is the best thing ever. True, true. The episode is rather awesome. I, I like the training montage that Fluttershy did. The oh, song was montage. pretty awesome. You know, it was the montage I was hoping to get from the Iron Will episode that we never got. <laughs> then we ah. got here, so I was satisfied. That makes sense. Absolutely. It's cool, it's cool. So, how did you become a fan of the show? Well, at first I really wasn't a fan of the show, obviously. In fact, I was quite bad on the opposite end of the spectrum. I pretty much mindlessly hated it. <laughs> and then at one point, it just got to the point where I just kept seeing it pop up here and there. And I just got so incredibly curious. and it, was just, it literally boggled my mind why people would watch this show and enjoy it. So I decided to watch the first few episodes to try to figure out what was so dang interesting about it. And I went in to watch three, so five episodes later, I realized I had a problem. <laughs> And, uh, well, it's just been all downhill or uphill from there, depending on you know, how you look at it. True, true. That's not a problem. That's the beginning of the solution. <laughs> that was uh, about... Midway through, that was midway through season two, so I'm not, I'm not an early brownie. I think when I came off on the episode out of time was Last Roundup. So oh my. everyone was screaming the name Derby, and I had no idea what the hell it was all about. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. Last Roundup. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think back if EFN started after or before Last Roundup, and it was before Last Roundup. So, um, how do your family and friends react to your love for the show? I feel like a lot of people, they're like, they, I think the expression was, uh, I hope no one uses it anymore, it's called coming out of the stable. <laughs> Which, God, it was kind of stupid in that respect. But I just kind of, I just kind of, you know, told my parents and, you know, they were pretty cool with it. And, I mean, my mom had one of her friends uh, pick up a t-shirt for me. Um, when she was in the States, and uh, my dad, and it is Father's Day, I believe, so, so I'm just going to early shout out, because I didn't get it now, so happy Father's Day, Dad. I know you'll probably never hear this. He's, despite, you know, trying to keep up the whole masculine identity, he still, you know, came along with me when I was in New York, and we stopped by the big Toys R Us in Times Square. I was going through all the blind bags trying to figure out which one I wanted, and, you know, He, he wasn't there helping me pick him out, but he was he wasn't too far off, so I have to I have to give him props for that. Oh that's an awesome dad, man. That that's an yeah. awesome he should be dead of the year. He, he should be, given what he's had to go through this past year. True, true. So what about the friends? A few of my friends know about him. Pretty I don't it's not something I exactly hide, but it's not something you know I'll bring up. If someone will ask, you know, I'll tell them. And a lot of my friends, you know, I've told them about the sort of stuff they've noticed it, and as a result, they've gotten into it too, and those who haven't, you know, they still get along. It's something that doesn't really bother me. I'm pretty open about it overall. Okay, okay, that's interesting. I mean, uh, I think that's a normal dichotomy of friendship, really. You, you have friends who love um, the same things, and then you have friends who don't agree with what you like, and eh, it's friends. I mean, none of them are nearly as involved with the whole thing as I am. God, I don't think I could look at someone else and be like looking in a mirror and realizing just how damn crazy I am. 
But uh, yeah, it's nothing. Not something that's ever really caused problems for me. Okay, okay. So basically, you're one of kind. I, I wouldn't say that. I guess I'm just kind of comfortable with the whole thing, and I don't get why people make such a big deal about it. We're all unique. True, true. We're all unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Does make us unique, like everyone else. <laughs> okay. Circular reasoning, gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks for answering the point for the questions, chromosome. Now we can move on to the next topic, and the next topic is housekeeping. And in housekeeping, I recently went to Singapore to meet up with the talented and awesome Black Griffin. Uh, during my visit, we met with a lot of awesome Singaporean bronies, including you, chromosome. And also, not to be outdone by Daniel, I gave Black Griffin... An exclusive MBS show button set and a McDonald's pinky pie pony toy. I didn't know we were competing. I didn't know too. <laughs> I didn't know we were bringing him anything. I would have bought him a cookie or something on the way there. <laughs> true indeed, true indeed. No, but the meetup was fun. So now that I have somebody else to talk to about it, um, what do you think about it, Chromosome? Well, I mean, my impressions from it are pretty limited considering I basically had to. Um, speed run across Singapore because I thought it was tomorrow instead of this actual day. But aside from that, I thought it was really cool. I mean, Black Griffin's an incredibly talented guy and he's someone who I had a lot of fun talking to because he had experience in something that I had to dabble a lot into and that's the fandom itself. It was really interesting to get a sort of a, a perspective of someone who works pretty closely with the show staff. And, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. I think I learned a lot. And, um, well, I hope to talk and meet again with them soon, so that'd be great. Yeah, that's true. But unfortunately for some of the Asians here, this will be his last time in Asia, because uh, he's not going to come back to Asia anymore. That's well. I have to wish him the best of luck on his future endeavors and whatnot. True that, true that. Well, anyway, meeting like Griffin was pretty awesome. Um, he, well, <laughs> believe it or not, he taught me how to sing, well, the fundamentals of singing, really, breathing, and he heard my cover of a song I did. Yeah, he, he heard the song I did cover. Yeah. I, he enjoyed it. He said it was good, but I thought it was terrible. <laughs> well, everyone starts somewhere. True. But anyway, meeting Black Griffin was pretty awesome. And for you guys in the States right now, he'll be back. And, well, he is planning to go to BrodyCon. Planning. If you're lucky, you may meet him. Do talk to him. He's pretty awesome. That's in August, right? Yeah, yeah it's in August. Yep, 2nd to 4th August. Mm-hmm. So anyway, moving on to the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, 5 reasons why Rainbow Dash is better than Xbox One by Serial Velocity. Now we're doing soft news? I don't know. It's, it's been a slow news day. <laughs> so anyway, we here on the MBS show don't usually report on opinion piece. But when we do, it's going to be good. So, a recent article written by Serial Velocity popped up on EQD, stating that Rainbow Dash, the fastest flyer in all of Equestria, is better than the Xbox One gaming console. He gave five good reasons why, and those reasons are, she's backwards compatible, she will gladly play used games, she can fly, she comes in more colors, she's free. Links can be found in the show notes. Uh, basically, I got no idea what to say. It's just entertaining. This is just entertaining. It's free because she's not for sale. Yeah, so basically you can get it for free. With every Happy Meal. It doesn't seem like that kind of man. I mean, maybe Pinkie Pie, but... Yeah. Well, actually, he gave more reasons to it. I don't want to read them all because... Uh, most actually, of... you're right. Pinkie Pie applies to all five of these. Ay, ay, ay. Pinky can fly, Pinky also comes in more colors. Okay, so, uh, okay, let me just read the passage here. Rainbow Dash was quite confused when I asked her about this particular point. After getting over the fact that I had apparently snuck into her, her cloud house, she said that she would gladly play a used video game as long as it wasn't covered in spiders or something. So, I mean, it's, it's that kind of tone with this story, but hey... It's the Xbox One. What do you expect? Maybe somebody gave you a used video game you played nonetheless, right? Indeed, indeed. Unless you're on the Xbox One. <laughs> so, Dan, why don't you take something serious? Okay, fine. So, now, news sites. What are they talking about? 
comes out tomorrow, but we're going to tell you now anyway. They're talking about Equestria Girls, so on a more serious note, with the release of Equestria Girls in theatres, three news websites have written articles on it. In case you missed it, Equestria Girls came out on the 16th of June. The website Slate.com is for the idea of ponies turning into humans, but their perception may be a little skewed. And of course, looking at some other websites, Better Beat and DailyNews.com, they are in the camp that ponies should stay as ponies, both stating that the humanization of ponies are too sexy and may influence the mind of young children. How that is going on, I have no idea, but links can be found in the show notes. You be the judge of this. So Norman, let's hear what you have to think about it. Well, personally for me, I'm not 100% hating on Equestria Girls because I haven't seen it yet. I am dying to see it. Nobody's seen it. It comes out tomorrow. Oh, some people have. Some people have. Wait, what? It leaked? Uh, If you've seen screenshots, yes. Some people have seen it. I don't know how. Can't really confirm the authenticity of that. That's the thing. Uh, the screenshot looks really good but we're not going to talk about that so does a lot of the fan art no no it's from the theatre cinema thing yeah but we're not going to talk about that we're not going to talk about that Um, but now the idea that Slate.com has here is um, is giving reason for people to draw humanized pony art and their idea is to draw R34 perhaps yeah I've seen how they write about it but yeah yeah, but honestly speaking... Why on earth they're doing this? <laughs> because people needed an excuse. No, no, no. I mean, come on, it's my little pony. It's in the name. <laughs> no, no, no. Here, uh, there's a comic that I think... Who wrote this? Um, so? No, Seth wrote. And it's a short packet comic. And let me just link it to you guys. Basically, the comic says... Hasbro's doing this for the toys, money, and blah, 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 and talking. And this one person goes to the person's talking. Oh, sweetie, sweet honey, that was never a hindrance. Indeed, it has been. Yeah, I've seen this. Yep. Basically, even though if Hasbro haven't done it, it's going to be done. Is the internet for crying out loud? I think they actually would know better because, like, you're not going to stop the internet, are you? It's no plug to pull on the internet. Okay. Nothing <laughs> sacred on the internet. <laughs> True yeah, indeed. Start the internet. True fine. indeed. Uh, but for Beta Beats and Daily News, I can see where they're coming from, but that's taking to the extreme. You, you know what? Something I noticed here. All these news, these three news sites, they're opinionating their opinions to the extreme. Like, no, but you, you have to understand how news sites work. Sex sells like nobody's business. So true. they just want to capitalize on it. You think they care? True, indeed. But no, it's like taking the point to the extremes level. Like, video game influence the mind of children because they're playing GTA, they're playing this, they're playing that. And that's why they're promoting violence and stuff. Blah, 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 blah. And honestly speaking here, all of us, we played a few shooters and I don't see any one of us um, carrying around a big heavy machine gun accompanied by a doctor who shoots out health regenerating rays of health. Man, I would if I could. That sounds awesome. Yeah, but no, that's not going to happen. This is just taking a certain point to the extreme. But that's but my opinion. But the age-old debate to that is always, you know, back in the day we played this game where this kid runs around eating weird pills to stop shooting <laughs> aliens. It's called Pac-Man. True. You don't see any of us doing that now, do you? True indeed. But no, uh, Chromosome, what do you think? It's a bit of a silly debate. It's always been an opportunity for things such as, you know, television or newspapers or whatever to degrade what is essentially a a competing form of media. And because people are always desperate to find something to blame for their problems because, you know, demonizing something is usually easier than to face what the actual societal problem is. As a result, uh, video games have been demonized for a very, very long time, and that's probably never going to change. True. And it's just something you can kind of just, you know, shake your head at and move on. Because people who think that way will likely never learn unless they're educated by someone who knows way more than I do. True indeed, true indeed. Rid, what about you? I kind of feel the same way the chromosome does. I mean, it's demonization in a sense. The news companies always do this. No, there's no news like bad news. So yeah. when it comes to this, they're going to have to, you know, demonize it and... If need be, like in this case, sexualize it in such a way that, hey, everybody wants it because, you know, it's, it's sexy. True yeah. indeed. But nah, it, it's, it's the thing here right now. It's Hasbro wants to make a buck about dolls. And like I said in previous episodes, 
Hasbro don't have a doll in their uh, in their arsenal of girly toys. toys. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an opportunity, and here's the deal: if it fails on the toy level, they'll scrap it. But if the DVD sales are good, they'll probably well continue on. They might. Yeah. So. But then, uh, then again, thinking about it this way is that. You know, these companies and these news sites, they know that there are bronies involved. They know about the existence of bronies and they love to make fun of us. So when it comes to these kind of things, they say, oh, Hasbro's just doing this because, you know, they just want to give innuendo to the fans so that they'll jump on it and start sexualizing it and crap like that. Because I... part of these people, they're all conservative people who sit in an editorial office all day, scrunch up paper and throw in the race paper basket because that's their full-time job. I yeah. Know. Yeah, I mean, but still, like, right now, the whole deal is... If you don't like it, vote with your wallet. If you don't like it, vote with your wallet. I mean, that's true for all of us. But when we're commenting on what these companies are doing is that they want to make a quick buck out of it. People will read it. People will see, hey, you know what? My Little Pony is becoming a sex thing now. And then everybody will be like, you know, that's hot. You put the word <laughs> sex in anything, it'll pick up on the internet. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's, easier. that's an understatement, honestly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you can't stop the internet. Oh, uh, no. No fanfics about us, please. Please, no. Oh, I already have those. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on to guest time. And in today's guest time, we have a pre-reader from EQD and also a fanfic writer. Chromosome, glad to have you on. Hey, hi again. Yes. So, Chromosome, having fun? So far, yeah. I'm more awake than I thought it would be, so that's good. Yeah, awesome. awesome. If we're starting to bore you, do tell us, because we need feedback. <laughs> if, I, if you guys start to bore me, I'll just kind of leave. <laughs> oh. super awkward for the rest of you. <laughs> Hello? Uh, you're there? You're there? Uh, but anyway, on a serious note, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Um, so basically 90% of the internet. Okay. <laughs> My name is Chromosome. I am a fan fiction writer and a uh, pre-reader for Equestrian Daily. I'm most well known for my first story, uh, White Box, which um, she, which she, well, I'm just going to go ahead and toot my own horn and as minimally as possible. Um, pretty good acclaim overall. You might also know me perhaps from a another story that I wrote called Anno Domini, which uh, you may have heard of through short skirts and explosions because that was a uh, story swap that we did a while back during a project called the League of Extraordinary Gentle Bulls. And aside from that, you wouldn't have heard me as a pre-reader because for now I'm still not on a staff website and pre-reading is thankless work that you rarely get a kind word for doing. In fact, quite the opposite. You usually get trashed for it. <laughs> okay. And I guess that's me in a nutshell, really. I mean, I've been involved here and there with some projects and stuff like that. And right now I'm busy writing a noir fic about Pinkie Pie getting murdered while I'm waiting to work on my next big project. Well, okay. As much as that sounds a little bit creepy, I actually think I want to read that. Oh, if you're if you're a fan of things like uh, Sin City, uh, Max Payne, or hell, even Dick Tracy, you might get a kick out of that. I'm actually more into sad fics, you know. I don't know why. Well, I mean, the title of the fic is quite literally Pinkie is dead, so I don't know how much more sad you can get. Okay. True, true. I'll check it out, I'll check it out. Okay, so number one question is, how did you get into fanfic writing? When I first learned about the show, when I just got into it, it wasn't long before I learned about, you know, the whole fandom that was behind it. And it was there that I discovered, you know, Equestria Daily and, you know, all these fanfics, you know, of course, you would start with the notorious ones, you got your My Little Dashy, your Cupcakes, then Fallout uh, Equestria, which I will never read, because one, it's too long, two, it's eh. and, you know, I've been writing for a long time before, I was, I just finished doing, you know, a bunch of uh, independent stuff on DeviantArt that was with pretty minimal attention, hmm. uh, and so I decided, you know, it looks like there's an audience here, so... You know, I just found the show, it's great, and maybe the fandom and the community is great too, so why don't I just start writing for that? And that's pretty much how I decided to start writing my first story. And that first story was... Uh, that first second. story was White Box, oh. which um, is a strange little story. Basically, I can't exactly remember how it came about. I know that I was working on a thick, and it was just kind of 
stopping and starting because I didn't exactly know where it is I wanted to go with it. So what I ended up doing in the end was just, you know, kind of leaving it and going to bed. And I remember waking up in practically the middle of the night with this just this random idea. So I just kind of started, I jumped on my computer, despite, you know, the fact that it was damn late. And I just kind of stared at my screen for a while. And then I just wrote the first line, which was, the lights hurt my eyes. And <laughs> it took off from there. Okay. And... Yeah, and that was my that was how my first story came to be. Very typical for writers, I know how it feels. <laughs> and it's been a very long, crazy, crazy ride ever since. Yep. So basically, um, have you been in other fandoms where before this? No, I have not. I have a pretty strong aversion to fandoms in general, so I'm pretty surprised that I ended up in this one. Oh, interesting, because um, I'm looking here and you wrote a lot of fix and honestly speaking you got one two seven seven fix but all the seven fix are more than two chapters long yeah so basically you wrote a lot um, everybody needs a hobby <laughs> well that's that's debatable you know compared to some people i write uh i write practically nothing oh um, don't, don't say that you you at least got what um seven seven hundred followers that's awesome uh, yeah recently hit my 700 by check. I'm currently sitting on, I think, 704? 704. Yep, yep. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it's not it's not incredible. It's not impressive by the stretch of the imagination. Considering I'm, I'm trailing behind skirts who I think just passed 3,000 a while <laughs> back. But I think, to me, I, I try not to focus on numbers, you know. It's more yeah, about... Yeah, we're not fighting. You know, it's, more, it's more about, you know, the reactions that the interaction you get with all these great people. True, 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 true. So true, that's so true. So one thing I noticed in your all your fix is you do a lot of dark kind of fix, dark tragedy or dark adventures, basically a lot of dark. So yes. why that's, that's, that's probably why I'm not sitting on a on a larger uh, on a larger fan base, if you will, because um People don't like to see their ponies being emotionally destroyed and picked apart like a carcass. <laughs> Mostly mm. here for the cutesy happy shipping, and because I neither write shipping nor porn nor cutesy happy, mm. uh, it's a bit of a struggle, and the fact that I've gotten this far is pretty goddamn amazing. I'm not quite sure how to done it. True, 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 true. Give me a second. I guess the mystery of, you know, when you pick up your pen and you write, and you just can't stop writing because ideas just keep flowing. I've never let numbers be something that I really focus on. Or there are some people who you know, are incredibly interested in their follow account and their hits and all that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, it's more of you know the writing spirit that keeps going, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. It's more just this drive to get out ideas. I started writing because I, I at first I tried drawing and that didn't go too well, though recently I have started picking up drawing again to some success. But I just needed some medium to just get these ideas that were stuck in my head out. And, you know, writing was just the most accessible thing. So it's something that I've kept doing. And it's only once I started writing for this fandom that I, was, that I ended up needing to step up to a completely different level. Because I was writing for strangers who knew what they were doing and they didn't give a damn if, you know, they read my stuff or not. Mm-hmm. So having to up myself to that level has just been so incredibly important. And it's just helped me so much in everything that I do now, not just writing. And awesome. as for, you know, my choice of subject matter, that's, that's always been a problem. I don't know. Whenever I come up with ideas, they're never really happy. I, I, have, an, I have an aversion. I'm on a war with the happy ending. <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cool because, like, if there's too many happy fix, there's going to be an imbalance in the in the yin and yang so basically you need that balance of somebody's gonna write the happy and somebody's gonna write the tragedy set fix and perhaps yeah they're, they're, everyone has their own niche you know you write for you're known for writing a certain thing so you write that certain thing and for me it's more the dark than the sad so hopefully soon enough I'll be branching out into the epic adventure so that should be quite fun you should try and, uh, the adventure ones first like a simple adventure one one shot maybe. A one shot seems to get those ideas out and see test the waters on what the reaction of your fans. 
know, it, it, it does, but this is something that I've been planning for a, a very long time. Ooh. So... And well, big adventure coming up tomorrow, don't forget. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I, I can see if you if you have something planned out, that'll be awesome. So, moving on, I've noticed here you've got one human in your writing. It's uh, Eno Domini? How Eno Domini, yes. Uh, Eno Domini. So, how does it how does it feel or what what's going through your head when writing a fanfic including humans in it? Um basically one thing. This was this was the thing that I ended up uh, talking about. When I paired up with short skirts and explosion, the we basically had to come up with the objective was we had to come up with a like a, a common sort of uh, a common sort of ground, a common prompt. And one of the things that I suggested, which ended up being later after some debating what we ended up doing, is doing a human in Equestria that doesn't suck. <laughs> which is a lot easier said than done. True, yeah, true, 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 true. I think all of us idea. think, oh, how hard can it be? And oh, then no. suddenly we realize, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Touché, touché. But this was something that I'd been carrying around in my head for a very long time. This was finally its chance to actually, my chance to actually do it. And what I ended up ha- creating was a story that was basically not exactly a fan fiction. Mm. Something that didn't have pony until maybe the last 200 words. Oh my. Discord aside. Mm. And I struggle to think that it, I was actually intending to say anything because I don't usually go for some sort of a, a moral, though I do aim for a theme. For me, it's the more important thing is about the character, and in this situation, the main character, Hayden Sparks, who finds himself waking in a wasteland, we'll just leave it at that, I'm not going to spoil anything else, and it's just about his journey and the desperation and the lengths that a human being or any living creature will go through for not only the sake of responsibility, but in the simple name of survival and of redemption and of what horrible things they'd be prepared to do in order to make that happen. My, I'm interested now. That kind of sold me. Oh, that's, you know, I have to, I have to sell myself into writing it, otherwise I'll think it sucks and I won't do it. True that, true that. Hearing that, I kind of want to read it now. I do read a lot, and right now the one I'm reading is from Tech Ogre, The Memories of a Reality Jumper. It's kind of romance, adventure, size of life, human, yeah, and then it's got a teen and golf, yeah. It's pretty good read. Uh, Dusty Cat recommended it, so I read it, and it's pretty okay. It's kind of, how do you say, OP-ish, because the human gets the pony, and you don't want to know, yeah. That is, that is known in the business as a Gary Stu. Yeah, but he does get hurt a lot, so, yeah. Everybody gets hurt. Pro tip for any writers who might be listening, not making your character a Gary Stu or Mary Sue has nothing to do with whether or not they get injured. That is irrelevant, and it's a common mistake people make. It has everything to do with their personality and the way they carry themselves and the way that other characters react to them. My character could, for example, get his arm chopped off and then just, you know end up having Fluttershy, you know, heal him back, and then Twilight Sparkle gives him a magical power off or something stupid <laughs> like that. Just like a very extreme case example. Mm-hmm. But it has nothing to do okay. with their physical well-being. It has everything to do with their emotional state and the way they carry themselves around others and the way they act. And usually it's very, very easy to, to spot out a Mary Sue or Gary Stu for people who know what they're doing. And mm-hmm. um, coming from someone who does write a lot of original characters, to act predominantly original characters. It's something that I've had to teach myself to get good at, though thankfully lucky enough to have a mindset that uh, has a complete aversion to those sorts of characters, and I usually end up pounding my characters into the ground instead. Oh, okay. You keep yourself in check, in a way. Mm. True. If, I, in my opinion, I, like I said this to a friend, when creating an OC character, build him up to a certain point, yet give him weaknesses. Never leave out the weaknesses, because... You do not want your character to be OP. Once he's OP, he's no fun anymore. I'll, I'll give an example because I'm actually, right now I'm writing a character who's a ton of fun um, for this morphic that I just mentioned, uh, a detective who goes by the name of Sideways. And okay. he's very interesting in the way that he is, he's a very skilled detective. His, 
his Judy Monkey, though it's never exactly mentioned what it is, he basically describes it as he can read ponies. He can tell by the way that they carry themselves, the way that they speak, the way that they, you know, the, the way they move, just the subtle differences in their, in their reactions. He can tell if they're lying or if they're uncomfortable, that sort of a thing. But on the other side, he's someone who's incredibly distant and someone who's riddled with regrets from things that he's done that were very much by his own foolishness, his arrogance, and it's something that's gotten people killed. Oh and as a result, he's someone with an incredibly low self-esteem, and he has a tendency of taking that out on others. Moreover, despite the fact that he's very able, to, he's easily able to jump on these sort of subtle character traits, he can't empathize, and he has this sort of disgusting trend of self-pity and self-loathing that he often takes it out on people who really don't deserve it, even to the point where a grieving pony, you know, feel even worse. Ooh. And it's that sounds a lot like me. <laughs> and it's striking that balance between, you know, a character that's completely impossible to relate with and completely unsympathetic and still somehow making him likable. That's not only challenging, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. And meanwhile, having a character that you're basically just pouring yourself into with all your dreams, your desires, your fantasies, whatever, I mean, that's that's fun for you. For everyone else, it's really boring because they don't really care about you. They care about the character and what you're going to do with your story. To me, that's the most important part. Wow, that sounds interesting. Now you make I me mean, want to read it some more. <laughs> I, I can already relate to this character. Reading this soon. <laughs> I think, why not? I'll just edit it to my favorites. Yay. Update email, yes. If not, I shall bug you. <laughs> so, um, how long do you plan on uh, making this fic? Because I noticed that you do write more than one at a time. So um, Actually, right now, I am only writing one at a time. The one I'm working on right now, Pinkie Pie is Dead, is something that I challenge myself to release a chapter for every day. In fact, I've already released one the first day. Oh. And... I'm not sure because I'm not sure I keep losing track between where I am writing wise and where the story is in terms of where it's updated. Mm. Okay. But the story, if all goes well, it should complete in four more days. Ooh. I think awesome. there's about four chapters left and after that I'll be rounding it out. And then I can start focusing on my next big project which I'm super excited to start with. Anything that you can tell us? Um, No. I'm trying to keep it as completely under wraps as possible, so... Uh, Not yet. <laughs> all, I, all I can tell you is that the main character will be Twilight Sparkle. Ooh. That's all I can really say about that. Elecorn Princess or just normal Twilight? I was toying with it for a very long time, and thematically I decided that Unicorn Twilight Sparkle was a way better choice, because that's how I started planning the story before the end of Season 3. So I just decided to stick with it. Okie dokie dokie then. So, Dan, go any questions? Uh, not exactly. I'm not a big fan of fanfics. Oh, dang you, you broke the flow. You broke the flow. That's all right. Like most people aren't. Uh, I mean, I do read, but the ones that I read are those that are, well, sad, and I don't come across many sad fics that are actually good. But now that you're <laughs> telling me about this new one that you have, you know, Pinkie Pie is dead, I'm actually quite sold on that. I really want to read it. Well, I hope you do. So anyway, Red, you got any questions? Not really. I'm, I'm kind of on the same page with Daniel, like... I, I don't read fanfics that much anymore. The ones I have read are usually sad. Like, the last one I remember reading was The Cold Hand of Mercy. The Cold Hand of was, Mercy? Ever heard of it? Mm, no. Sounds really. familiar. I may not have read it. Is it new? Um, no, it's from a while ago, actually. Um, I haven't read fanfics in over about three, four months. <laughs> it was basically like Fluttershy becomes like the new death. <laughs> It was really interesting, actually. Is she the one? Is this the one where she died first and had to bury her? Fr- oh no, her friends had to bury her. No, she had to leave, Ooh, and then wow. uh, she had to like be basically death and like take souls into the afterlife. Oh, oh okay, I see. Um, comedy or sad? Just sad, sad like tragedy kind of thing. Oh, really neat, it'll be funny to hear Fatishai going around taking people's life. <laughs> Your time is up, I mean, if that's okay with you. You can go now, I can take you down if you want. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. <clears throat> You're not free? Okay, I'll come back tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>
And no one died ever again. <laughs> Unless you get her mad. Then everyone is dead. <laughs> uh, but moving on to my other set of questions. You're a pre-reader for QD, right? So how did that happen? That happened through the way most things have happened for me in this fandom. And that was through a, a sort of series of coincidences. For a while, I was uh, involved in a video game project that ended up uh, not going anywhere due to uh, personal reasons. Not on my end, though. Well, partially on my end. Uh, I, 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 I try not to dwell too much on that because it still confuses me today. Uh, but during that time, I was also in contact with a fellow by the name of Alex, who was often on the, uh, the film fiction IRC room. So... But for a while, I talked about it to him because I remember him because when White Box went up, he was one of the pre-readers who sent me, uh, uh, personally, who sent me an email, you know, uh, congratulating me for it. And it's funny because now we're, we're constantly at each other's throats disagreeing on just about everything. <laughs> it's kind of funny to look back on this email and say, oh, it was so nice to me. And it was, oh, it was a privilege reading this and that. Or it's like, yeah. Nice. Nice. You know, long gone days of innocence. <laughs> oh. But... Through him, um, I talked to him a lot, basically, to get um, updates for this project through putting out a, a call for members and to get them posted to Equestria daily without them getting, you know, lost or buried in a nightly roundup and actually getting it its own post, mm. uh, which in the end we did. And through my talking with them, eventually, somehow, I managed to get myself pulled into the Equestria daily uh, Skype room. Mm. And suddenly, you know, I'd gone from just, you know, kind of this guy, and all of a sudden I was in the same room as people you've already mentioned, like Seth, Serial Velocity, and all the pre-readers. And through there, eventually, I managed to worm my way into the pre-reader IRC. <laughs> and at that point, I was just like, okay, you know what, since I'm here, I might as well apply to become a pre-reader. And so I did, and I ended up, you know, getting the job, old job, and I'll get paid, which I did. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, I've been pre-reading ever since, and just recently I started um, managing the emails that go between uh, Equestria Daily and the fanfic department and the authors who send us stories, so it's been a pretty cool ride, and the people that I've gotten to talk with and interact with in the Skype room are awesome people. Oh, that's cool. So what goes into pre-reading? Like, I heard that pre-readers have to read a lot of fanfics, need to approve this and approve that. So, how is it behind the scenes of a pre-reader? Okay, so the way that this works is that on Equestria Daily, if you have a look, under submissions, there's a link that leads you to a Google form if you're an author. Uh, you fill that out, you put in your details, you know, name of your fig, your author name, a link to the story, cover art, description, characters, tags, all that sort of thing. Once you send that, that gets sent to us and put into a spreadsheet where we catalog all our stories, their positions, you know, what the final verdict was when they went through. And they get sent to a primary account, which is called the, the fanfic box. And people who are on the fanfic box, first we do a preliminary scan of the fic. We look through stuff like, you know, things that are in terms of content aren't ready for aren't for, for Buster Daily, you know. Uh, if it's mature, gore, uh, has sex tags, or if it's uh, some of the things that we don't let through, such as Brony and Equestria. Um, if that's the case, they get auto moved and no one ever sees them ever again. Um, otherwise, they get forward to the pre-readers. And what the pre-readers will do is they will read through it, and they'll give a final verdict on it, depending on how if the fic has been received before. For example, a fig that has three strikes before we send it back and we won't look at it again. Oh. Otherwise, the editor will look through it, they will say what they think of it, they will deliver a verdict of whether it should be posted or sent back for editing, and then that message goes back to the fanfic box, and the person in the fanfic box then forwards that message either to the author telling them what needs to be fixed or forwards it to Seth telling them, here's an accepted story, get you posted. And that's basically what the process works like. So basically, if Seth says go is a go, then, without going through the whole process? Seth has no involvement in the fan fiction. Uh. It basically, if we say it's a go, he posts it, and he rarely ever questions it. Actually, I'm pretty sure he never has questioned it. And that's generally the way that that works. Uh, okay, so basically... Well, basically, you can sum it up in the three words that EQD always tells you. 
to the queue. It's just a random, it's just a continuous sequence of to the queue. Yes. <laughs> True. Basically, yeah. I, I've got that email once or twice before, as we all say. I got it a few times already, and then sometimes it's like, so how long's the queue? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, at the moment, it's quite long. So, I can tell. You is, is it true that, you know, during this hiatus of between, you know, seasons, uh, is this when fanfics come in much, much more than they do when seasons are in full play? Uh, I couldn't tell you that because I haven't been here long enough. Since <laughs> oh, okay. I was out of the fandom for personal reasons for a long time throughout most of season three. I really don't know what the discrepancy is, but I'm pretty sure that there are more fanfics during the hiatus. Okay. Hmm. That makes sense. I'm looking here through the EQD stuff and the pre-readers. I don't see your name. <laughs> no, I am not on there. Uh, oh. As I said, because I I left. That's a, that's a bit of a, a disgruntled word that you will hear from me here. Is that uh, when I left, I had never been put up on the staff page. In the meantime, a bunch of new pre-readers were added because we needed more hands on the deck. Uh, they were added to the staff page. So people who were who have been pre-reading for a lot less longer than I have are on there, and meanwhile, I have never seen my face on there yet. Oh. And if you do see me on there, it will be by the alias of Bat Pony. And uh, <laughs> you may also see me in the comments section where I demonstrate my own brand of moderation justice. <laughs> okay, okay, well, okay. I mean, just like how EQD has its pre-listeners as well for music, I think sometimes when there are those few anonymous pre-readers, now you're not so anonymous because you're here, <laughs> but basically, the anonymity helps because... Now people don't just run on over and know, oh, okay, this guy likes Rose Luck. Let's write a Rose Luck fix. It'll, it'll oh, get him. Uh, no, no, about that. I'm totally okay with that. If you want to send me Rose Luck fix, just go right ahead and more power to you. I will leave. Because back in the day, it was anything with the word Trixie in it is instant approval. So now, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's yeah, what's going to yeah, happen. Like I said, Seth, though, doesn't have a, doesn't have a say in the fanfic, so, you know, rumor dispelled. I mean, if you just said, hey, I have a Trixie sticker, do the queue. <laughs> No, that, that was, so you do a great job. That was back in the days when pony content was sparse. Now, pony content is everywhere. So, Seth has to hire a few people to do certain jobs like listening to music and yeah. reading fanfics. So, once again, to all of you who work in ETV, you guys do a fantastic job as well. And, you know, hiring great pre-readers like Chromosome here, that's a great thing to be doing, you know. Keep it up. Yeah, true, well, true, I'll true. be passing on the word because we don't get a lot of thank yous. If anything, we get more uh, hate mail than anything. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we even have a group dedicated to hating us on uh, fiction. Wow, really? Well, I'm not no. surprised, but then again, you know, if you have haters, it means you're doing something right. Exactly, as I always say. Uh, I'm a bit kind of blurry at this point where people want to hate on pre readers. Is, is it some kind of community where. <laughs> We but don't then, like what you do because you don't post our stuff up. Is it yeah, that? that's, that's basically what it comes down to. And some people do have legitimate criticism. They don't like our policies on certain, uh, you know, on, on certain topics like that we don't post. Well, the fact that we don't post sex or gore, that's that doesn't come down to us. That comes down to Seth. I mean, um, but still. But stuff, you know, like Brony and Equestria that we don't post certain things because X reasons or Y reasons. Um, and, you know, as pre readers we're a group, but we don't always get along and we make our own decisions and we have our own opinions and whatnot. So, you know, slip-ups do happen and, you know, people have bad days or there's just a fix that someone really doesn't like and so they ruin it for a reason that they probably shouldn't have, but, you know. So it just goes through one round of pre-reading? It doesn't go through, you know, multiple venting or anything? Uh, you know, if we did that, then we would have way too much to do. It only okay. goes through one person, and if the author finds that the review is unfair, they can request a second free reader. Mm. That's always all right. okay. Okay, that's interesting. It's actually a beautiful system you've all got there. And, and when a story comes back after a round of editing, the author can specifically request for the same pre reader to look at it or have someone completely different take a look at it. Oh, okay. So that's, it. that's the form thing you mentioned just now. So Yes, yes. There's an additional comment section where people can say stuff like that. Ah, let me take a look at the form. Let's see. Oh, my. Submit fanfics. Ah, title story. And then, like, your synopsis story, okay. And then what character? Th- this is really good. It's a well-done system. Yeah, oh, wow. It's really well done. Oh, it's it not kind of has to be because, uh, you know, we get so much traffic that, you know, we have to make sure that we can streamline something. Otherwise, we'd all be in way over our heads. 
basically when you take a look at the inbox for the fanfic division, do you have any specific tags that you like to search out for? I don't really search by tags. Usually right now we have a bit of a backlog, so I just kind of look at uh, what's oldest in the queue and I tackle that first. Oh. I don't search for anything, though there are things that I will avoid. I have an aversion and a, a complete and total aversion to shipping in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Uh, so as a result, I have others take a look at that for me because I just, I just can't read it and I can't enjoy it. Basically, you won't give a fair assessment to that fic. Exactly. If I have, if it's a fic where I'm going to have an unfair bias against it, I will avoid reading it. I'm sure to you. Does the length play a role in this as well? It can. You know, you don't really. It's not super fun to read something that's forty thousand words long. <laughs> I mean, you already mentioned that with uh, what do you call it? Follow the question. So yeah, I understand. You know, that. This is straight. Nope. Interesting. The the fanfic division of EQD is really unknown, but once people get into it, it's really fascinating. Yeah, we do what we can. I, I might try and do a fic, yay, one day, and send it to you. <laughs> You'll have to specify wanting pre-reader bat pony to take a look. <laughs> oh, okay. I could just send it to you through Skype, but hey. <laughs> or you could do that, but, you know, you'd have to actually send it to the fic box because <laughs> things like that need to be cataloged. Okay. We have on record every fic we've ever posted, rejected, or you know sent back for editing. We have recall for it. If anyone ever asks a question about something, like uh, whatever happened to this story that was posted two years ago, we can look it up and tell them exactly where it is. Mm. Okay, so Dan, you got any questions? Still no. <laughs> um, figure there is isn't something that many people are curious about because not many people are involved in it, and that is a hard and sad truth. True. I mean, if you count comics as fanfic, then yes, I do read comics. And I do read <laughs> yes. EQD comic strip. I do not think that would count, though, no, because they don't go through us. <laughs> okay, fine. I mean, fanfic's in a more general perspective in terms. Sometimes I do consider comics as fanfic. And also, just to sidetrack a little and go back to housekeeping, yes, I have now finished reading the first four comics. <laughs> Yay. Awesome, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, still didn't go up to my expectations, but it did raise it for me. You should love episode 5, 6, and 7. I haven't Soon. read that yet. Soon. It'll be good. It'll be good. So anyway, okay. since most of us don't have any questions for Chromosome about EQD and fanfic in general, I think we should open this to random questions. So, Chromosome, have you been playing any video games recently? Um, I have, and uh, I'll tell this to you right now, I am notoriously terrible at video games. Well, so am I. Yay! <laughs> and I so is that. I am basically awful at every sort of game ever put on the planet by man, with the exception of first-person shooters, which are basically the only thing I'm only decent at. Uh, recently, I've been playing uh, a lot of scrolls, which is uh, Moe Yang's new uh, game that they released, the same guys that made Minecraft. Oh, okay. Which is an uh, online uh, card game, which has this sort of cool strategy hex-based system. And uh, right now I'm just trying to pull together a decent deck because what I've got right now is uh, only useful if I have certain cards in my hand, and otherwise I'm basically screwed. Oh, that's interesting. Is it on Steam or...? It is not on Steam. You actually have to buy it through, uh, through their website. Oh, so if you have Minecraft, you can create a, a Mojang account and merge that with your Minecraft account, and okay. you can buy it all through there. Oh, that, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, other than that, you've not been playing anything? No Minecraft? Um, aside from scrolls, um, I'm playing a bit every now and then. Like I play some uh, some old games like uh, uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi mm-hmm. Outcast. Well, at least um, you can play that and have fun. I can't even win solitaire. <laughs> well, Solitaire, in your defense, is a very hard game to win. Oh, you just put it on easy yeah. and then you can click through No, 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 no. I reshuffle until I get three aces. <laughs> uh, do you even know how to Solitaire? <laughs> I know how to Solitaire. I'm just lazy. Oh. But, Red, um, you got any questions? I find it really interesting, the fanfic area of EQD, because, and it's the same thing with music, those two, I find it really interesting how those two have such a, like, they have pre-listeners, pre-readers, but like the art section, like the biggest section, probably on EQD, because they're supposed every single day from the start 
is the art, and there's no like pre art viewers for that. The pre yeah. art viewers that is known as Seth. <laughs> yeah. And the extent of what we get from Seth is every now and then he'll maybe throw us a throw us a video into the chat and say, "Hey, is this good? Is this bad?" Or if it's particularly <laughs> late at night, he'll send us an image and ask us to make sure that it's not porn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he has, he has okay. accidentally posted porn before because oh. it is pretty subtle. And yes, not, not only that, but sometimes, you know, he's so busy, he doesn't notice these things, so he likes to double-check before he does anything stupid. True, true. If I'm, not, mis- if I'm not mistaken, um, Cal Payne told us that the system for the art is done by um, scripting, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't the faintest idea. Yeah, I remember something oh, about... I remember that he said it was, uh, there was a, uh... Something. A something bot? about the posting of it. Oh, for the posting, yes. There is a, there is something that's set up. Otherwise, the, the way that it's formatted would just take way too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There are preset uh, posts and stuff like that. It's, it's all very streamlined because I, I post on Equestria Daily before um, when I was running a, a fanfic competition. Oh. So the whole thing is pretty streamlined and things can be set to be posted at a certain time. Oh. And... Because bloggers are so easy to integrate with a certain kind of scripting, it would make the whole thing a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yep. Because... Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, Dan. Oh, no, I was actually going to ask, I mean, uh, I'm going to change the topic, so yeah, uh, finish yours first. No, it's just that since EQD has, um, well, according to the top section here, art, news, fake media, and so on, it, it's pretty interesting, like how this small group of people started out to be posting ponies and stuff turned out to be this mega place where people just post stuff left and right. If you want to get noticed as a brony, post on EQD. Dang, you get noticed. One does not simply post on EQD without going through stuff. <laughs> exactly. It's a more. It's a, it's a more of a one man show than people actually think, which is a. Uh... Not necessarily a great thing, and it makes it questionable for the long run, but in the end, I guess it's really not my decision. True, true. But still, you got um, people under Seth doing stuff, like pre-reading, pre-listening, and, well, he needs to aggregate stuff. And he even gave Digibony the rights to do um, analyst videos, so that's cool. So And now, actually, I just want to ask, you know, I don't, I'm not very sure if you know anything about the origins of this, and um, just by any chance, if you do... The big red button on EQD that says no fan fiction mode. You mean Why the one that, that every thing? last one of us hate with a fiery exactly. passion because it is killing fan fiction on Equestria Daily? Yes, I want to know why it's there. Why, why is there no, no music mode? Why is there no, no animation mode? But no fanfic mode. That's that button. That exists because people ask for it. And people are dumb. <laughs> so if you don't like it, and I'm being serious here, tell that to Seth. Just send him an email saying that you don't think there should be this button here. Because unless people start complaining, unless people make a big fuss about it, because fanfics are getting the butt end on that quest for daily, as they do in general in the fandom, you have to tell Seth that you want that change, because unless people cause up, you know, a mudstorm, that's going to stay there, and it's not going to go away, which is, in my opinion, incredibly unfair to the people who work really, really hard to get their story up there. Because with the click of a button, all of a sudden it doesn't mean anything because, you know, someone doesn't want to see it, so they'll never take a chance, never try something different. And it's something that Seth ended up doing because everyone wanted it, not necessarily because it was the right thing to do. Hmm. I mean, I understand that it's there. It's just, it's never bothered me, but now that I've actually taken it into consideration, I noticed it's been there since I became a brony, and in fact, probably even before that. I've always noticed that button. I never clicked it because I don't find any use for it. But why is there a no fan fiction button and no no music button? That's the only thing. So, well, that answered my question. So, thanks. Yeah, it's it's kind of unfair, really, because, like, for example, people say, no comic button. I don't like the comics because they're so dumb. Uh. I mean, people do do good comics. So, like, I remember a few times where I dabble in some fanfics in the... Give me... What's the section of the fanfics of the day? What was story this? Story updates. Story updates, yeah. I, I remember looking through EQD, just scrolling down, and then like, huh, this seems interesting. Story updates. Uh, let me just click, see what's going on. And I I found a few good fix through that. Like, 
the whole changeling in Ponyville thing. That's fun. People don't do that now because they have this option to not even bother trying to go for something different. Exactly. Which is which is in itself a problem because people, granted, fan fiction has a negative connotation, and for a, a, a darn good reason, it has a negative connotation. But people need to start moving past that and realizing that some of the stuff that gets out there is quality material. This is, I, I've read things that could easily be published, and they're written by people that I've known personally, so it always blows me out of a lot when I see literature of such a quality that's coming out of fandom. So when you realize that the whole is getting harmed by a stereotype that to an extent is true, that can also be completely you know, eradicated just by the level of quality that people give blood, but then, of course, it's currently kind of being enforced because the recent publication of a book about multiple shades of a certain color <laughs> is out. That was a fanfic, in fact. It started off as a fanfic, so it kind of has darkened, no pun intended, the whole scene of fanfiction. Nah, true that. But the thing is, um, I, I, I can understand why the button's there because... Uh, people don't like reading. People don't want to read. So people... Then don't read Equestria Daily because that's reading. Exactly. And who knows, even if you don't want to read, maybe one day like a title will catch your attention and you'll be like, oh, you know, I'm actually kind of curious. I want to know what this is about. But because you know, it should be replaced that. with... It should be a no Equestria Girls mode or <laughs> no drama mode. <laughs> I agree. The drama button would be glorious. Though I do think Equestria Daily does a good job of not posting drama. So no so comments about that stuff. No comments button would be great. Frustrated daily commenters are usually not very smart. Yep, no drama button in general. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> oh, I, I completely... There is, you know, hard. actually, there is one. It's the power button on your computer. Fewer <laughs> <laughs> uh, words have never been spoken. Like, I found few picks that way by just scrolling through the updates. And seriously, guys, seriously, the listeners at home who are listening this, give... Give it a shot. Give it a try. I mean, you'll find a few good fix. Um, I would recommend to you guys, um, Sunny Skies All Day Long. Go read that. That's fun. It's a good. It's a good fix. Go read that. Okay. Test the waters with that. And even if you are, even if you are someone who reads fan fiction, um, try something different. You know, look into an author that you're not usually used to reading. Look into something that sounds like it might be interesting, even though it might not be your thing. Try swapping between genres, try straying from your comfort zones, and don't always be reading things that require you to only have one hand on the keyboard. <laughs> oh my, uh, I get you, I get you. Yeah, true, true. And also, if you want to gamble, like here, Chromosome likes Rose Slug, so do do this. Go to Fimfic, or, well, Fimfic is a good example. Um, just go there and click on a pony that you like. Who knows? You might find something interesting. That's how I found a few good fix. There need to be more good Rose Luck fix. Go to a random fix, control F, replace rarity with Rose Luck finish. <laughs> I, I will be good with that. I will I will read it, I will love it, I will post it, and you will be my favorite author ever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Here's something interesting that popped up recently on EQD. Uh, Rainboom, trademark filled earlier this month. That's interesting. Rainboom was trademarked? Yeah. Oh, okay. Trademark service, uh, trademark slash service, mark application, principal registry, uh, blah, 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 rainbooms. Yes, with an S. Similar to a question. Was it filed Google. by Hasbro or was it filed by Zachary Rich? Uh, the mark content, I got no idea. It's, um, the, it doesn't say. You just go to EQD and it's up there. But it's interesting. Oh, wow. That is interesting. I have a, I have a rainbow dash keychain for my car keys and it's, there's a trademark right there next to it. Really now? When so did you? I when did you bought it? I bought it like a week ago. Oh, okay. It was trademarked last month. I have very it's little. Uh, very little in terms of pony merchandise. Oh, but never mind. Plural? Why is it a plural? I don't know. Well, but anyway, a uh, very proud owner of a Rose Luck figurine. Ooh! How did she Ooh. got that? Um, I got it in a blind bag, actually. Ooh! Lucky, lucky. God smiled upon me. Did you search it out or just got it by random? I didn't. I, 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 I was pretty thought in, that if you're actually looking for it, then that kind of defeats the purpose. But I, I literally just got it by chance when I was picking them out. Awesome. 
My first pony blind bag was Pinkie Pie. Why is everybody so lucky? Mine was one of those flower girls. <laughs> No. Excuse wishes, me. Excuse you. Roselock is a flower girl. <laughs> no, no, no. Not in the show flower girl. I mean, I'll be happy if I get Roselock, but I got what? Flower wishes, and I'm like, wish upon stars, not flowers. Mm. Oh. I'm sure there are flower-shaped like stars. Mm. That counts. It's true. Yeah, that's true. This is interesting. I, I love talking to you, Chrono. You're fun to talk to. I try. No, not really. I'm not just... I don't know. I guess. I don't deal well with compliments. Okay, you suck. <laughs> Does it work? That's more my alley. That's more my alley. I can cope with that. Okay. So, Red, you got nothing? Um, no, not really. Oh, man. You, you haven't been talking much. Come on, talk. I feel kind of bad. Well, <laughs> no, it's fine, really. I'm just... Well, it's still kind of early for me. Oh, Coffee? I mean, just ask anything because, well, ask even ask. We we, we don't mind answering them. And cue the crickets. just lost all my questions, too. <laughs> I had like a bunch go through my mind and now they're all gone. Oh, oh, sleep. Why does this always happen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's an interesting one. So, everyone here says they have their own pony merchandise. So, Chromosome, you only have the Rose Luck? Uh, no, I have three shirts, I believe. Mm -hmm. I have um, a carrier bag that I have used ever since I got it. And in fact, it's right behind me right now, and it has my figurines in there. Oh. Um, I have two figurines, uh, two blind bag figurines, uh, a Rose Luck one, obviously, and one that goes by the name of Bumble Sweet, I believe. Bumble Sweet. Ah, uh, yes. The one on uh, Pixel Kitty's Valentine's Day poster. Hey, I have that one too. Choo choo, I choose you. Always, always falling over because her model is poorly balanced. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. The one I choose have... you is Let's Be Friends. Oh, yeah. I also that's... have a rarity brushable that I have not yet brushed. <laughs> and she's in the mood right now, so I won't be able to do that until I get back to the States. Okay, it's cool, it's cool. What about you, Dan? Me? Yeah. Um, official or unofficial? Both. Um, let's go for official first, then unofficial. Uh, well, I do have some you can consider half official, you know, falling off a truck in China kind of merch. <laughs> okay. I mean, I do have a Pinkie Pie sponsored by the generous members of the Malaysian Brony Society who kept swiping my Toys R Us star card. Eventually got me enough points to redeem her. Awesome, awesome. Uh, got a rainbow dash for my brother. Both brushables, Pinkie and Rainbow, both brushables. And now, just, um, if you heard last week on our show, we announced that the ponies are now available in Malaysia to Ma in McDonald's. And this week, I believe it's rarity, so head on over to McDonald's and get your rarities now. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, I haven't gotten a rarity yet, but I got a Pinkie Pie from one of our co-hosts, Tasha. Oh. When it was in Australia, and that's hanging from my car's rear view mirror right now. Oh, Otherwise, awesome. I just have a few blind bags. Um, I have a glow-in-the-dark pinky pie, courtesy of Charlie. I have a glittery pinky pie that fell off a truck in China. <laughs> and I also have um, flower wishes somewhere oh. upstairs. Awesome, awesome. So, no pony shirts? Um, I have two, and uh, both of them were made by, made by myself. I don't have anything from We Love Fine, except for the derpy poster, which is awesome. DIY then, okay, awesome. And of course, the big, huge, I don't know, I still think probably a canvas bag or something with the steampunk rainbow dash. Oh yeah, that, that, that's always good, that's always good. Yep. So what about you, uh, Red? I have a bottom merch, actually, I think. I uh, have it all in a thing somewhere. I have some of the brushables, and I'll have the white Celestia oh. that talks. <laughs> Let's fly to the castle! <laughs> Does she say to touch her butt? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> it's like, she starts to get trippy and my wings are so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, like, like just official stuff, I have the, the keychain I mentioned earlier. I can't think of anything else I have. Oh, I bought one of the comics. Ooh. Um, issue 7. Ooh. Ah. Issue 7. It's the first one I read and I, it's really good. It's like, they put a lot of time into that. True, true. Yep, the I, I can't wait to read the next set because from the synopsis of the next set, it's going to star the background ponies. Ooh, yes, good. I did see that Rose Luck is on the cover, so I, am, I might have to start there. <laughs> Yay! It's a good place to start. Uh, Actually, Rose Luck is already in the first issue. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 I've got so much to do. This page, I think. But in, you did say something about unofficial items. I did want to add one more thing to the list. Um, my mouse is actually currently on a, uh, a mouse pad that has the, a character from the first story I wrote, White Box. Um, Ooh. It's a canvas oh, okay. themed mouse pad, which is very cool. And a friend made that for me and sent it to me from the States. Wow, that's cool. Awesome, awesome. So I have my own personalized pony merch, which is kind of cool. Yay, that sounds awesome. I don't know if it's official or unofficial. I have a shirt from Camelot Gardens. Oh, kind of sure that's uh, on the concert. Yeah. Um, if it's done by Willa Fine, that's official. Yeah, it's done by <clears throat> Gildian or something. Gildian, oh. it's like a t-shirt company or something. Okay. Oh. And then hmm. uh, I have a Firefly plush. Ooh. Oh, no. You, you, off the show, you're making me jelly. <laughs> oh, that's well, awesome. I have a lot of yellow and blue balloons, so... <laughs> Oh, that, that's awesome. And then uh, the a wonderful merch. scarf. And then, uh, oh, then a poster from last year's Tracon. Wow, wow. You're living the pony life. Oh, I'm so jelly. <laughs> oh, and also a reminder, you know, Chef Sandy or Apple Side, if you're listening to this, Norman's still waiting for his badges because I have those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still waiting. Yeah. But never mind, I got my own in six buttons. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everybody has cool merch. As for me, I got the blind bags. I got no idea how I got a lot of them. Oh yeah, uh, thinking about it, I bought a lot of stuff from Wheel of Fine and they keep sending me blind bags. And also, Brony Time, if you want brown pony merch, you can just answer their trivia question and they'll send you pony stuff. Stuff. If, if you blind answer it right. Whatever they have on the stuff, you know? Just check them out on there. Some of them are really, really easy, especially when we're on the panel. We know the answer. We just can't tell them. <laughs> Indeed. Well, anyway, I think that's it for us. We, we, I think we've gone random a bit too much now. <laughs> well, ramble, ramble, ramble. We went full random. Never go full random. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, people who get that are awesome. <laughs> so anyway, I think we should end this. So that was our guest, Chromosome, a fanfic writer and also a pre-reader on EQD. Thank you, Chromosome, for coming on. Thank you. It's great to be here. So, Chromosome, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on my uh, fan fiction page, which uh, links to everything else that I do, such as my Steam, as well as my Tumblr, where I put up art every now and then. Wow. Awesome. I can't wait to... Take a real good read, but right now I, I like like the pre readers. I have my own system that I need to go through. <laughs> so he's got his whole zeitgeist worth of adventures. <laughs> hey, if, if you okay, um, for you guys out there, I don't write fanfics, but if you want to know what I'm reading right now or what I like, my fanfic account is uh, fanfic dot com slash user slash Norman Sanzo. Yeah, I'm there. Just look. Fanfic at, or fanfic? Fanfic. Okay. Sorry, fanfic. Yeah, my bad. Two completely is, uh... different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> my bad. But anyway, uh, it's there. Okay. Just go take a look. See. So and... they have a genre. That's uh, they have a Western genre. What for yeah, fanfics? Genre. For fanfic dot com. Oh my! Like, <laughs> like genre. Yeah. So they, I suppose they got the Eastern genre. As well. <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> hey, I'm Eastern, okay? But you're Indian. I'm Chindian. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it still counts, I guess. But anyway, um, now. <laughs> <laughs> we're all a little bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is shout outs. So uh, my shout out goes to you, um, Chromosome. Thank you for coming on and being an awesome guest. Well, that's more of a shout in than a shout out, but I'll take it. Do you want me to insult you so you can feel comfortable again? No, I, I think I have myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And thank you, uh, Red Pair, for coming on. Uh, I thought that Dan might not come on, but he did. But still, thanks for coming on. It was awesome well, to have you on. It's nice to be back again. Yay! We should do this Good more to often. Have you back as well, yep. And also, one more shout out goes to Black Griffin. Thank you for teaching me how to sing and how to take photos. That's awesome of you, man. Thanks. And Daniel, what about you? We just added photography to Black Griffin's infinite list of skills. Wow. 
Oh, he has his DeviantArt. Go look. Okay, yeah, I've seen his DeviantArt. And uh, I'd like to shout out, first of all, to all the fathers around my dad. Everyone's dad here. You know, Mini Apple Jack, you know, and all those brony fathers out there. Five Iron, Alpha. Happy Father's Day. Yep, happy Father's Day. And uh, a couple more shout-outs, first of all, goes out to Black Griffin for, of course, I did that last week. Yes, indeed, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt, but yeah, shout-out to you again for yeah, being, being awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of you here, thank you so much. I'm sorry I was late and we had to make you all wait on me for a while. But, oh. yeah, thank you all for being here. No problem. So, Red, what about you? To not be like consistent with all the other ones. Basically, just a shout-out to you guys for having me on again. No, that's no problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bogart Bronies group because I love working with you guys. It's just such a blast. Awesome. You need, you need to type that in the chat so I can uh, thank them in the show notes because right. it's confusing. <laughs> so what about you, Chromosome? Well, I guess I'll start by thanking all of you for letting me be here and giving me a chance to flap my gob. That's always fun. No problem. Um, otherwise, I'd like to throw out a shout out, shout out to my uh, dad who is still. Uh, in the U.S., who I'll be seeing again real soon, and I can't wait to see him. And a uh, happy Father's Day to him. Awesome. And uh, also a shout out to you know the free readers who are probably going to link, who are probably going to end up maybe seeing this if they have the patience to sit through all my ramblings. And I guess a, a shout out to my readers because I will inevitably link them to this eventually. So if they made it through all the way this and. Uh, they managed to hear me say thank you, then I'm going to get you a cookie or something. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and if you did listen, you know what's the next fanfic going to be. So it, it's worth it. Shame you enter the house in the middle of the night, this little iPad is up on the bed. And now you know. <laughs> Somebody's been reading fanfics all night long. Uh, how did you know I do that? Simple, because you have an iPad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions... For the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at normansanzo at mbsshow.com and daniel at daniel at the MBS show.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. We're Norman at the MBS show.com, not Norman at the MBS show.com. Okay. Um, <laughs> never mind. I'm just going to leave this in because it's entertaining. So anyway, you can also reach us on Twitter because we tweet a lot, if you notice. So, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. Get your daily dose of negative anger at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Okay, so what about you, Red? Do you have a Twitter? Um, yes, um, it is at Red Pairing. Awesome, I'll link I that in the show notes. Usually, usually post, like, sketches or whatever, or just angry thoughts, stupid thoughts. Never saw my mind. <laughs> awesome. That's what Twitter's for. <laughs> Indeed. So what about you, Crow? Do you have any Twitters? I do not have a Twitter. I do not believe in Twitter as I do not believe in gravity. <laughs> oh, Twitter is fun, seriously. If you do get Twitter, do uh, hit us up. We'll add in the show notes. Yep. Indeed. So also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Red Pair. And apparently I've been Crumbs. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Go forth and abolish no fanfiction. Oh, see you around. This was brought to you by the MBS show. <laughs> Funny on, Love people. Me. Bye-bye. Love me. Uh, press the button. Press the button.